Welcome everyone. This session is enhancing APM test stability with the power of helium by Yogendra Porbal. Without further delay, over to you, Yogendra. So thank you so much, Rika. Uh, so he already gave an introduction, but uh, I will just elaborate. Uh, so I'm Yogendra Porbal, uh, currently working in Ben Mile as an uh, architect in test automation. Um, and I write blogs on Estelle Element and with my both sides as well. Um, this session, um, actually, we uh, will be discussing how we can uh, actually enhance the stability uh, with the self-healing capabilities uh, in test automation, right? So ever since uh, APM has been incubated in Source Lab in uh, 2011, right? Um, it's been the go-to choice for uh, all of us uh, software tester when we talk about mobile test automation. And uh, when with the launch of FEM 2.0, it's reaching new heights with this scalable architecture, right? And with the help of community who is developing a lot of plugins that are solving multiple problems that we have related to mobile test automation. But there is uh, one challenge that all of us uh, software tester mostly phase is the uh, false failure or uh, um, changes uh, related to superficial changes in UI, right? And failure due to that, you know, a test formation, right? Uh, that, uh, so I think all of us, uh, you have faced that as well. Just give me a thumbs up if you actually encounter that, right? So industry actually uh, had an innovation, right? Or worked around an innovation uh, called self-healing. Uh, to encounter that uh, so that we can self heal our, lo our locator which are just uh, have superficial changes or class ID changes right um, but most of those uh, innovation or solution in self healing are actually packaged with the premium tools like Catalon, browser stack or Firefling, right and there was no open source uh, solution for that uh, but there were uh, one solution which is open source and can be leveraged in uh, our Selenium and APM test automation to actually add the capability of self-healing, right? That can increase the stability of our test automation and reduce the test flakiness. So it's none other than uh, Helenium. So Helenium is actually the combination of uh, healing plus Selenium, right? Very innovative. <laughs> so we will be discussing around Helenium in this uh, session. So let's go over the agenda. So first thing first, we will see like uh, what are the challenges related to test flakiness that we encounter. And uh, then we will briefly go over Helenium, uh, just look into like what this tool is, right? And then we will see like how uh, this Helenium actually work. We will go in depth, how multiple services in Helenium actually talk to each other, what are their responsibilities, right? And how self-healing is working. Then we will actually go and demonstrate like, like how we can set up the Helenium with the Docker in our system. And then at the end, we will give a live, we will check on a demonstration where we will be integrating Helenium with our APM test automation. And we will see how self-healing actually work in a real time or practical, right? And the first thing, the challenge of test flagginess, right? So in test automation, be it Selenium or APM, we all see like a, there are a lot of false failure, right? Uh, whenever we are working on MVP, so or, uh, there are apps like SAP, uh, Dynamic 365 service now where the elements are very dynamic, right? So, and addition to that, there are uh, very frequent superficial changes in UI when we are working with MVPs, right? Like label, color, sometimes uh, product is okay, change the color to red or color able to log to sign in right and those uh, actually uh, uh, get changed in the dome but there is no functional changes right so that should not break our uh, test automation right it, it's not impacting the testing uh, but it actually break and it create a problem for us right there are uh, uh, sometime update in structure from the developer side they decided to change id in classes right for some reason but there is no, no functionality or UI change right so that actually caused our test fail uh, and uh, okay, why why uh, change your functionality 
and then create a time those locator right uh actually those that time should be spent in the functional testing or creating new test automation but we are just spending the time in the maintenance so that is the challenge of test readiness right um let's go over the helenium what helenium is actually so helenium is an open source tool uh which is actually backed up epam and incubated uh there and it actually provide the self-healing solution for selenium uh, in the starting. So they developed it for the selenium uh, server in the beginning. Then uh, the support for APM has been added in the tool. So we can use that with the APM server as well and locator for the mobile uh, test automation as well. Then uh, how this selenium actually uh, work between. So it actually act as a mediator between your test script and APM server, right? And whenever uh, there are requests go through APM server, they are going through the Helenium actually. And whenever we have a, a no such element exception, it intelligently handle that. And actually our script won't even know that there was such a, no such element exception and the fixed or self filled locator directly injected to the APM server. So let's go over the benefits of Helenium. Right. So there are multiple uh, or a lot of benefit actually, but we will go over a few. So first is improved stability, right? So as soon as uh, we don't have to worry about the broken locator, right? They have been self-feed. So it will improve the stability of your test execution, right? And it will give you a sense of reliability in your test automation execution. And uh, it will give a sense of reliability in the product or stakeholder minds as well that those test automation actually work and not breaking a lot. Uh, then it also handle a dynamic uh, elements as well. So if you have worked with uh, SAP or maybe Dynamic 365 service now, you know the pain of uh, working with this, uh, those dynamic locators, right? Which are generated at the runtime, right? You have to prepare a lot of uh, wildcard locators or XPath or CSS uh, selector, right? And sometimes you have to actually prepare them programmatically in the script itself uh, instead of just uh, hard coding them. So it can easily handle those as well, right? Uh, it will help you to minimize maintenance because uh, you will have uh, the new or self-filled locator directly available to you. So you don't have to go to the dome or maybe uh, the inspector to identify the new locators for your elements. It will be available to you and you can directly update those in your script or test script. Uh, the next is root cause analysis. So Helenium actually provide you a very beautiful or maybe a detailed root cause analysis. So it will have the broken locator, right? The screen uh, shots where it actually broke, right? And the cell field locator and the score as well, like how it performed. So those information will be available for you. So you won't have to go and debug through logs or test innovation uh, information, right? To check like where actually it breaks, right? So you will have that report already. And there is one more uh, beautiful thing, which is a plugin for IntelliJ ID. So Helenium actually provide a plugin that you can directly use and uh, you don't have to copy paste those uh, new locator or cell field locator from the report, right? It will be directly available uh, in the IntelliJ for you, right? And I will show you how actually in the, the further demo but it will actually uh, minimize the time between like finding or go through that report and putting it in the test automation or uh, test script or locators, right? So even that is being done with the plugin. So how Helenium actually works? So we will go in depth uh, in multiple services, which is part of, uh, which are part of Helenium, right? So as I mentioned, uh, the Helenium actually work as a mediator between uh, your uh, APM server or Selenium server, right? And your test script execution. So there are actually two ways that we can use uh, Helenium. Uh, one is with the Selenium server and APM server. So whenever we are using a Selenium grid uh, for APM, we, we mostly use APM server only, right? We don't have a local uh, driver. But when we talk about Selenium, we have a choice to use the local driver and uh, execute those with our local browser. So for that as well, you don't have to worry about the proxy. Uh, if you are using it, it is actually supported by Java only, right? So you can include that Helenium uh, dependency in your uh, 
maven uh, or pom.xml and it will be available to you. But in this session, we will be talking about APM. So for APM, we can only use Helium proxy, right? So all the traffic that uh, from our test script or API requests that go to APM server will be redirected through Helium proxy. And uh, Helium proxy actually inspect those and maybe listen to those API requests continuously, right? Um, so whenever there is a no such element exception from APM server, it won't send that response to our test execution. But instead of that, what it will do, it will go to Helium backend, which is a second service for Helium. So in this Helium backend, it will say, okay, we have got a no such element exception, right? And the failed locator as well. So what locator we have tried, right? And with that information, what Helium backend do, it will go to the PostgreSDB with already have those new locators, uh, sorry, the old locator and all possible node path for that particular particular locator, right? So it will give a response with that particular locator and uh, the all possible node path for that locator back to Helium backend. And what this Helium backend uh, will do, it will go to selector imitator. So what selector imitator is like a brain for Helium backend, right? So what it will do, it will send that broken locator, the all possible node path from the PostgreSDB in an API request. What the selector emitter will do, it will analyze those broken locator and all possible node path and prepare a new cell field X path or locator for cell field locator for Helium backend. So as soon as this Helium backend get that new cell field uh, locator, it will go to the Helium proxy and inject that locator in the API request to APM server, right? And then it will again fire an API request to find element. So as soon as it get that, we find a new, we find the element, the new locator successfully, and that response will be sent to our execution or in the test script. So that's how actually the cell filling uh, work in Helium and how this all four services. So we have Helium proxy, Helium backend, PostgreSDB, and selector emitter, these all four services are actually talking to each other. So if it is uh, actually um, understandable, so you can give me a thumbs up it, if it is clear to you, right? <laughs> or if you have any question, yeah, just go, you can put that in the Q&A. So we will move to the next uh, slide, right? So we will see how we can integrate Helium with the APM, right? The actual uh, demonstration. Uh, before that, let's go to the prerequisite, right? So we need Docker. So obviously, uh, Helenium is actually uh, using Docker for it to start up is uh, all the four services. So we have Docker already installed on my system. You can scan that QR code. Uh, it will redirect you to the Docker site and the installation instruction, right? The second, we need APM, of course. So for mobile autom uh, automation, we need APM, right? You can again scan that QR code and it will redirect you to uh, the APM installation instruction side. And then uh, we are using a boilerplate code uh, that uh, prepared by Pinmile and us, right? So it is a simple mobile automation framework. Uh, so it has only a user login, invalid login, uh, test to test, right? That we will be using to demonstrate the self-healing capabilities. You can again scan that to go to that repo and clone that. And then we are using a demo app because we need to show you like how the, uh, if we make some superficial changes, how it will impact and how the self healing actually fix that locator. So we are uh, using an app from the source lab itself. So it's a demo app prepared by source lab, uh, which is in native Android, right? So we will be showing the demonstration with the Android app. And last but not the least actually Helenium. So we will be cloning this Helenium repo, GitHub repo. You can scan that QR code and it will redirect you to the GitHub repo of Helenium. Okay, so let's get to it. So how we can start the Helenium proxy? So first you need to clone the GitHub repo. So I have already cloned the repo, I can show you. So just give me a second, hard yeah. So I have already cloned the repo, right? It's ready on my system. And then uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, update the APM server URL so that Helenium will know like which APM server it should be listening to, right? Or where all our uh, 
traffic from or, or our API request for the test automation will be going to, right? And then we will run some uh, a simple Docker Compose uh, command for that particular Docker file or Compose file, right? So let's get to it. Um, I have updated that APM server URL to because I'm using the local APM server, right? It is updated as host Docker internal because uh, not, not the local host, because from the Docker itself, if you want to uh, uh, access the local host of the system, right? We, we need to provide that because Docker don't know the local host, it will be for the container itself, right? And we are run, uh, actually using this Docker Compose APM YAML. So it has all the configuration that are needed for the APM integration. Same command, Docker Compose file, the file path for that. And uh, Yep, so all four containers are started. I can show you. So here, so it's all the four container or services, right? So here is the Helium proxy, then we have Helium backend, Postgres DB, and then selector imitator. So it will take a minute to start. Uh, and with that, we can start our APM server as well. So we have started our APM server as at 4723, the same path that we have provided here as well. Okay. Um, so it's our uh, boilerplate code, so I can show you. So it just has a, a single uh, login test. So it will be running two times. One is for uh, valid login and one is for invalid login. So what we are doing, we are going to homepage of the app, click on the menu icon, then we will have some menu. We will clicking on the login link, right? And just proceed with the login, right? Very simple test. And the locator that we will be uh, experimenting with is a menu option login link, right? So we have this locator as of now that we have configured, right? I can show you the app as well. So here is the code uh, from the Android native app from the source lab, right? And I can just run it uh, for the demo purpose and can show you like how the locator or how the label is showing as of now. Yep started so you may click on this uh, burger icon and you see right now the label is login right you can stop it again yeah so our helenium service is uh, also started we can uh, go and check here so hmm, i think it's, it's still starting yeah so you to know that our Helenium uh, is actually started, we can just open localhost 787 at port, right? And it will let you know if it is started or not. Hmm, I think it's started now. Yep, started. So we have two part report and selector here. So I will show you like how or what uh, information these two tabs have, okay? So I think we are clear till now. Our Helenium proxy is already started, right? Everything is done. Uh, uh, I have a Postgres DB uh, client before admin is also open, right? So I will show you like how different tables have the information as well. So currently we have four table. So healing, healing result, report and selector. Report and selector to store the information that we just see in the front end, right? And healing result is for uh, the self-healing result or locator, and this will contain the healing information, right? I will show you in the detail as well. So to make this Helenium work, right? So we need to do a successful run first, right? Because it need information from the previous locator and all the possible path, right? So it should know that this locator actually runs once successfully. That's how it will uh, uh, try to self-heal, right? So we will run it once so that all the selectors are successfully added in the Helenium DB, right? So we have launched the app. Uh, you can check here if it is launched or not, it should be. Yep, it is launched. Yep, it's proceeding with the test. So click on the login link and try with uh, one valid and it will try one more time with the invalid login as well. So I think it's already tried. <laughs> we missed that test. Yeah. 
Oh, so one is failed actually. So can't look at the element strategy. So slab product TV. Okay. So I think, okay. So one is successful. So I think uh, at least we have the locator with us. So if we refresh that, you will see all the selectors or locator that was part of our test execution are actually uh, recorded by the Helenium itself, right? So all the selectors are uh, collected, right? And we have a healing enable uh, toggle as well. So we can like tell Helenium like, okay, we don't want to self heal this locator, right? Or this locator, okay? We will be experimenting this particular locator for now. So let's see the report as well. So it will for all the test executions. So till now we have done two tests, right? So it will show two reports, but uh, that's why it is empty. And let me show you the DB as well, how the information is getting stored. So here, let's open our uh, query tool. Yeah. Select the start from Millennium dot healing. This is the first table. Yeah. So till now, no healing has been done. So it's empty. Okay. Healing result will also be empty. So I can show you the report and report will be also empty, but there we have, we will have at least two record, right? So you see, we have two records created, but the elements are empty because there is uh, no self healing done, right? And then I can show you selectors, how selectors are actually uh, getting stored. Yeah, so you see, we have uh, like maybe six locators that are actually used and for all those we have stored information like the method that we have used the locator that is actually being used the original locator and all possible node path for them so you see there are multiple node path that we have added like so it will store all possible combination of uh, multiple uh, path to reach that particular element to help him or uh, okay right so you see uh, this login uh, label we will try to or text we will try to change it to sign in okay let's save it run it and we will see if it is getting changed in the app itself yep so you see the label has been changed to sign in, right? So we need to build that app again. So our test automation as well. Yeah, it's done. Let's go back to release. Here is the new app. We have here, replace it in the build. Done. Okay. And now try to execute this test again. You see the app has been launched, the label has been changed. It will take some time, right? Because there is a multiple steps, like we are getting no such element exception, but it is not being sent and going to Helium backend, right? Yeah. So you see, even though the label has been changed, right? It is still able to find that sign in button or sign in link and able to click on it, right? So if we go to this, I think, yeah. So first is successful, even though we have changed the locator of, uh, or changed the label, right? So it should, it should not be able to find that because the locator says text as login, but the text is signing there, right? Okay, both is successful. So previous locator that we have found, uh, uh, no such element exception, right? Because we were running it on the, at the beginning or the very first time. So it didn't had any reference to self fill the locator, but it might have now. So if we go back and check the reports, uh, let me rephrase this. So we have two tests, right? We go to here. So we have a uh, one locator that has been healed. We have a screenshot, right? So we can say, okay, so this signing button was changed, right? I can go and check, uh, I need to go back, yeah, yes. 
And then we have the failed locator that is actually part of our test script. Then the healed locator, right? So what they prepared from the selector imitator and the score. The score is actually like how uh, probability, how probable it is that it will be successful. So it also provide a score. Uh, so if, if, if it is B, uh, it is below 0.5 or 0.6, right? There might be chances that still, even healed locator failed, right? It can happen for very complex locator or very complex structure in the app, right? And then if we go here, yeah, you see, so there is two times it try it actually self failed for the two test cases. And if we go to selector, so same information that we had previously, right? And we had the healing enabled at that time. Let me show you uh, how this information is actually being stored in the DB as well, right? So that you have more information and context so that you can use that accurately or maybe more efficiently. So if you see, so we have one healing happened, right? For one test. So it is store the page content itself. You see, so the whole hierarchy or DOM or I can say activity for Android app, right? So it is stored the whole thing for the reference, right? So actually what has been held, and if we go to healing result, it will have two entries, right? So because two times uh, we have uh, healed the locator, right? And it will give you the new locator, right? The healing ID, it's for uh, the DB purpose itself, right? Then the score, if it is successful or not, and the, the date, right? Um, and the report report has the general uh, information related to the report itself. Yeah, the basic report information. So if you see all the information we have is here is related to the information that we see on the front end itself. Okay, and selector we already seen. So uh, we will check one more feature which is related to disabling this. Uh, self healing, right? Because sometimes what happens, uh, maybe there are elements that you don't want to add this self healing capability. You want to know whenever that element is actually changed, right? There are some critical uh, buttons where uh, they are very user uh, facing, and you don't want to uh, send some changes without getting notified, right? So, suppose I'm disabling the healing for this login button now, and uh, when I try to run it again. It should fail, right? Because we have disabled the cell pain. So I go to the app. Yep. It, it, it wasn't able to identify that sign in, right? And it's failing with uh, no such element exception. It, it was not able to locate that login element, right? So there, because there are drawbacks as well of using this Helenium, right? Or self healing, right? Sometimes there are, if you enable self healing for all the elements, sometimes there are changes that uh, are very critical, right? Or user facing and uh, that can go without uh, even notification or you didn't know them, right? So that can cause uh, issue in the production as well. That's why we have the capability to disable those as well. And then last but not least, the plugin, IDG uh, IntelliJ plugin, right? that you can use to directly update your locator. So we have all the information of, uh, in our DB, right? Uh, so that plugin actually uses uh, that DB uh, information or all the records that we have saved, right? The self field locator and the old locator, we are storing all that information in the DB, right? So it actually connect with the DB directly. Uh, so I can show you how we can uh, actually download or add that plugin, right? It's already updated. Uh, or installed in my system, but I can show you. So go to marketplace, uh, search for Helenium. It is available in the marketplace. It's, it's already installed in my system, right? So uh, as soon as it is installed, so in tool section, you will see one Helenium plugin entry, right? So if you go to that, you have to provide the server URL for that particular DB. Right. So currently the DB is actually hosted on my local. Right. So I, I, I'm just providing the local host 7878. Right. And it can connect directly with that. Okay. 
So how we can use this? So I just go here and I want to self heal this one, right? So I right click on this healing result and it will find what all the self healed result for this particular locator, not for all, right? If I try to find a healed locator for this one, it will give me uh, zero records or no healing re result are available, right? So it will give you the exact information, right? Or exact uh, healed locator for this particular expa. So you can go and replace that. That's it. Very easy. Right? Um, so I think uh, that was it from my side. I, I believe that it was very informational for you. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, you can put that in the questionnaire and uh, you can scan it here to connect with me on LinkedIn or uh, uh, the site where I write blogs, right? So thank you so much for Shrikant uh, for this opportunity and thank you everyone uh, to listen to me. Yeah. I hope it can help. Thank you, Yogendra. Thank you. Before we go to the q and I just mm -hmm. wanted to request uh, people who have posted their questions in the chat, if you can post it in the Q&A, we will look at everything there. In q and A, if you post it, we can mark it as answered or not. So that's the reason. So let's move on. So uh, Yogendra, if you can open the Q&A, uh, mm -hmm. just click on that. There are about 17 yeah. questions I see, a lot of okay. questions. So we might have to uh, answer as many possible here. If sure. not, we need to uh, go to the Hangout section. Sure, sure. I will do that. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so the first question is, uh, I think, from uh, Pallavi Kansal. So is this plugin available for Visual Studio? So for right now, uh, no. Uh, so the plugin is only available for IntelliJ. But uh, you have the DB connection, right? And uh, creating a plugin or maybe uh, creating a simple request for uh, the DB, uh, right, will be very easy. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, it, it's a very actually great suggestion. So we can we can look into it, right? Uh, but yeah, right now it, it is only available for IntelliJ. Right? Okay. Uh, how can I mark that as answer? Shrika? Yeah. You just say answered live. Okay, Button right. So answered live. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, second question is from Upendra Chohan. Uh, Sometimes no such element exception is known one and we handle using try and catch block like uh, dynamic pop-ups, alerts. Then we want to ignore self link folder. Yeah. So for that, I already showed you. So we can disable those, right? Uh, so I think it, it will, it answered your question already. Thank you, Pendra. Uh, we have two questions for uh, Epsom, uh, if I pronounced it right. Uh, I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. right? Uh, so how do Helium backend find the updated locator if we are using ID or accessibility ID for APM script? If ID is broken, then I guess Helium will not be able to find the path to the selenium in xml so does it only work for broken no so what it do as i mentioned right so it uh, actually collect all this uh, possible node path right so suppose there are 10 possible uh, locator or node path that can be prepared right so it will save those right and then try to uh, prepare a new locator or self field locator based on that so it's not limited to XPath locator. So even though your accessibility ID is broken, right? It will be able to find a new locator for that. Uh, the second question from him is, uh, can we use Helium proxy together with uh, the MITM? So actually uh, Helium uh, uh, backup, uh, I mean, it is internally actually using MITM uh, proxy itself to create that Helium proxy. So. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, but yeah, we can do. So there will be two proxies. If you have need a proxy to redirect your traffic from uh, or maybe spoof your IP, right? So what you can do, uh, you can actually pass those uh, uh, API requests to redirect uh, your uh, 
traffic from Helenium proxies, right, through that MITM proxy, right. So it, I think it, it will uh, work as simple as that. I hope I am able to answer uh, you. Uh, there is an anonymous question. Okay, we we'll start from scratch. Hmm. So I will try to do that next time. Thank you. Uh, then we have Surendranath uh, Reddy. So what is the mean and median response time to generate the healed selector path? What does the time depends on? So the time uh, actually depends on the complexity of the locator, right? But mostly uh, if you go to the Helenium uh, GitHub repo, they have uh, uh, very beautiful uh, information or uh, presentation to show like it, it's taking a millisecond time, right? To actually generate that new cell field locator for the selector imitator <coughs> service itself. So there are four GitHub repos in Helenium. So if you go to the selector imitator repo, it has that information. So you can find that there. There is another question from Surendranath. Does it only support Postgres or we can integrate it? So DB is actually uh, uh, in Postgres. So any client that can connect to Postgres DB, you can use that or uh, maybe if you want to use another DB, so it is open source. So you can uh, actually clone that repo and make the changes according to your need as well, right? Just uh, make sure that you are not using it for uh, the commercial purposes uh, because it's not uh, that in JNU license, right? It's on MID. So please make sure that only. Uh, doesn't does Helenium causes slowness in the test execution for both web and mobile? Uh, so there is an overhead definitely because we are directing our traffic uh, through a proxy, but it only do work or maybe only start some steps when there is a no such element exception, right? Otherwise, it just listen to the traffic. There is nothing. So it will add like maybe milliseconds of overhead for the normal execution. But as soon as there is a no such element exception, it will cause an error. Uh, I think overhead of 500 millisecond or maybe one second, I think. And then we have a question from Utsan. How will this setup work when running in CI, CD or any other cloud service? Yeah, great question. So because Helenium actually works or Helenium services actually work as a separate service, a standalone service. You see, we have started them in a Docker, right? So all four services or a cluster, right? You can start and uh, start as a standalone service on any container in AWS or GCP anywhere, right? And uh, you can expose that URL uh, to Helenium backend or Helenium proxy and use that in your test automation uh, whenever you are running them in CI CD. Right. So uh, I think it will be uh, even easy uh, for you guys to, I mean, use it in the CI CD. Yeah, there will be no problem. Uh, we have another question from Utsan. Does it even show us uh, how many failed attempt Helenium has tried before healing successfully? Uh, yes. So I, I was unable to show you that, but uh, if the self heal locator actually fail again, it will. Uh, show you in the report itself that it tried self field locator and it failed again and then retried. Then we have uh, a lot of question actually 19 to go. Uh, then is solution need to build binary? No, uh, Govind Narayan. This question is from Govind. Uh, is this solution need to build binary? No, we don't need to do that. Uh, so whatever uh, iOS app or APK app that you have from the developer or uh, available as a build for a staging or, or any lower environment, you can use that. How it add all possible locator for the element available. So it actually travels through uh, the activity or the dome, right? For that particular locator, because you have already provided a unique locator, right? When you run it first time successfully. So it will go to that element and then collect all the possible paths. Right. It does. So first it need to know like which element we are talking about. Right. That's why we need to run it first time successfully. So I think that will be good. Uh, then we have Sharad uh, Ganesh Pai. Does it heal? Uh, if the class type has changed, definitely. So whenever the class has changed, it, it can heal that. Uh, 
then we have uh, sanket uh, who is asking can we only use prose case i think i already answered that thank you uh, so could you please sample code uh, this is from guna silan so i have provided you with the qr code right so you can scan that and uh, it will redirect you to the both uh, i think that demo app and the boilerplate that we are using so the boilerplate that been mile prepared is available publicly so you can go and uh, use that if you like that you can uh, give it a star as well right uh, then we have another anonymous attendee what will happen if we put continue instead of sign in login okay so even if we put continue or maybe we update the label as continue in our app right uh, it, it it will again like try to find that and it will heal that right it's not about like uh, login and sign in has a similar name right it's more about the location of that particular element in the dome or activity right xml great uh, then we have another anonymous attendee what are the handicap when running pipeline processes uh, i don't think i understand that question hmm. so maybe you can ask uh, i mean add some explanation in another question i will try to answer that uh, then we have kartika devi whether it will work on parallel runs yes it can definitely run with parallel execution as well we have tried and tested so it works successfully uh, for the parallel execution as well both for selenium and apm 